By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back in Zandam at the Zombie Cup 2 and we've reached round number 3. And in round number 3, we've got two really cool decks going face to face. We've got a blue-black Underworld Dreams deck that's playing Evil Eyes of Orms by Gore. I mean, that's just really cool. And it is taking on a deck piloted by Evo, which is blue, black and green. It's a Titania's Song deck, a prison deck. And I mean, there are just a lot of cool cards in this deck as well. What about Stone Keller? Just to give you one example, it's, it's really sweet. Now, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks, and I'm going to start with the deck tech uh, part of the video pretty soon. But before that, I would first like to mention that, as always, you can also choose to first skip this, go to the games straight away, check out the deck decks later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. So if you click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And here we are going to continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Redmar, Blue Black Dreams. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Redmar. So it's blue and it's black. I've called it blue black dreams because of the underworld dreams that are in the deck. So underworld dreams and enchantment for three black uh, from legends that uh, reads your opponent has to take a damage for each card he or she draws. So it's a pretty strong enchantment. A lot of decks are built around the underworld dreams this deck is not really built around the Underworld Dreams. There's a lot more to this deck than just the Dreams. If we look at the rest, for example, I see three Evil Eyes of Orms by Gore, a card I already mentioned in the introduction. I think this is a super cool uh, cool card. It's one black and four to cast for this creature from Legends, a 3-6, and it cannot be blocked except by Wolves. And when it's in, in play, you can only attack with Evil Eyes of Orms by Gore. So if you've got multiple, you can attack with those, but you cannot attack here with your Dancing Scimitars or your Suchis. I mean... When I'm looking at this deck, it's interesting. There's a lot happening. Like, for example, we see a Diamond Valley. And Diamond Valley, of course, works really well with all these high toughness creatures, right? Diamond Valley, a card from Arabian Nights, tap and sack uh, a creature and gain life equal to the toughness. So that's pretty good. Uh, but, for example, we don't see any control magics. I always like control magic or another creature steal effect with the Diamond Valley. Then again, Redmar only has one Diamond Valley. Talking about one-offs, there are quite a lot of one-offs in this deck, right? We see one Dark Ritual. We see only two Animate Deaths. Uh, of course, the power is all one-off because it's restricted, but we see those as well. We see one Icy Manipulator. We see one Mirror Universe. So there's, there, there's just a lot of one-off stuff happening. And then all of a sudden, we see three Copy Artifacts. I find that quite interesting. I mean, the nice thing about Copy Artifact is you don't necessarily have to play with a good target for Copy Artifact because your opponent usually also plays with Artifacts. So, so there's always something to copy. And also, Mishra's Factory is a really good target. So Redmar is playing with four Mishra's Factories himself. So he could also target those with his Copy Artifact. So, you know, you usually end up finding a good target for Copy Artifact. But still, it's, it's interesting to see cho the, the choices that he's made. For example, a lot of decks, blue-black decks, always run Hypnotic Spectre. We don't see Hypnotic Spectre in here. And I, I actually like it. I, I think it's cool to see players, you know, trying out some other cards like Dance and Scimitar, like Evil Eye. I mean, there are difficult cards to get rid of, right? Because they have a really high toughness and they also work really well with the Diamond Valley. There's also a Mirror Universe in here. What I'm actually kind of looking at the deck, to me, it looks like you know, he wants to take some damage early on in the game and then later on kind of, you know, take over the situation with maybe a mirror universe and then finish it off with, with an Underworld Dreams. You know, that could be could be a line of play. But then again, I mean, there, there are so many other cards in here where you can kind of have an opposite strategy. For example, you could clone an Evil Eye of Orms and try to create like a whole Evil Eye of Orms army, which would be pretty sweet. Uh, but yeah, just a lot of lines of play here in the deck of Redmar. Very interesting. Looking forward to see how it's going to perform against Evo. Talking about that, let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Evo. And here we see the deck of Redmar. So this deck is really built around two Titania songs that we see here in the middle of the picture, just above the Sylvan Library. Maybe start just with those enchantments. It's an enchantment from Antiquities. One green and three to cast. That reads, I'm just going to read you the current Oracle text each non-creature artifact loses all abilities and becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness each equal to its mana value. If Titania's Song leaves the battlefield, this effect continues until the end of turn. This is pretty critical, right? So even if you disenchant it straight away, the effect lasts until the end of turn. So this Titania Song is all about timing, right? You want to play this card out when you're going to stampede over your opponent with all your mighty artifacts. And actually, there are a lot of 
big butt artifacts in here. I mean, a full play set of icy manipulators, a full play set of stone calendars, two jam day tomes, two mirror universes. I mean, a mirror universe is a 6-6 six, six with a Titania song out. Also, a stone calendar is a 6-6. Six, six. Remember, the artifact loses all abilities and you're only looking at the casting cost and that is the power and toughness. So if you time it right, I mean, you can trample over your opponent. It does, of course, kill your Moxon. We see a lot of Moxon here in the deck of, uh, of Evo as well. Those Moxon will be killed as soon as the Titania song comes onto the battlefield. Then we also see two The Abyss. And I think The Abyss is really good in this uh, in this deck because The Abyss is a world enchantment from Legends, one black and three to cast, that reads, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, destroy target non-artifact creature, Hey, non-artifact. So if you look at the list here of Evo, obviously he's not playing with any creatures, but his Titania Song, of course, makes all his non-artifacts into artifact creatures that are not affected by the Abyss. So that really works. A card that I'm really excited about to see here is the Stone Calendar. So Stone Calendar is actually not six to cast. Like I said, it's only five to cast, but still you get a five, five. That's pretty big. Um, and that reads spells you cast cost up to one generic less to cast. So it makes everything a little cheaper. If you can play this out with a Mishra's Workshop, I really like that synergy, right? It makes everything cheaper. Uh, that's pretty cool. And of course, with the Moxen, it'll allow you to quickly play out your stone calendar and simply to do multiple things in one go. And if you can do multiple things, you probably also have some space left for your GM day tomes. We also see four copy artifacts in the deck. So there are seven copy artifacts in total in this in this match. So that's that's gonna be that's gonna be maybe gonna be hard to identify what all those copy artifacts are. In case you're wondering, copy artifact does copy the casting cost. So if you copy a GMD tome, it now also has the casting cost of four. And with copy artifact, it is no longer blue. It's colorless, right? It copies the color of the artifact. In an old school, all the artifacts are colorless. So for example, you can uh, use a red elemental blast to counter a copy artifact, but you cannot destroy a copy artifact with it. It's pretty cool, right? Um, another card here in the deck that I think is really good is Hercules Recall. What I love about Hercules Recall, uh, this is a card from Antiquities, one blue and one, is that you can use it both ways. You can use it to send back all the artifacts of your opponent, or you can use it to send back your own artifacts, depending, of course, on the situation in the game. And I really love those flexible and diverse cards. I guess in this case, you really want to use it to kind of protect your stuff. But then again, you never know what's going to happen. And, you know, maybe you want to use it to send back the artifacts of the opponent. Remember, Repmar, the artifact of Evo, uh, artifacts, <laughs> the the enemy of uh, of Evo today is also playing uh, with a lot of artifacts. So the Hercules Recall could be quite interesting in this matchup. Anyway, enough talk. Let's go to the match. I'm just, I'm really, I'm so looking forward to, to watch this match. This is going to be exciting. Let's go to round number three of the Zombie Cup, number two. Here we go. Game number one. Here we go. And here we see Evo's hand. Ooh, Soul Ring, Titania Song, Sylvan, and also a Brain Geyser. And those two Trops. That's looking pretty good. And here we see the hand of Redmar. So Redmar's on blue and black. There's a Mox, a Time Walk. Doesn't have blue mana though, that's a bit unfortunate, but could deploy that Underworld Dreams pretty quickly, potentially in turn uh, two already with that Mox Jet. I believe it is the Titania Song Player Evo on the play exactly, starting here with that Soul Ring, passing the turn. So I'm expecting Redmar here to start with a Swamp and exactly the Mox Jet. Ooh, he's tapping something. There's a Felwer Stone. I think he just uh, picked that up from the top. So really good start for both players, really ramping up here. Are we now going to see that Sylvan Library? Tapping both. Okay, there's a Sylvan and passing the turn. And now I'm expecting the Underworld Dreams here from the Detmar. Underworld Dreams really good against that Sylvan Library. There we go. Yeah, and this is a big problem here. So he's not going to activate his Sylvan anymore because if you use it, you draw three cards. Even though you then put the cards back, you do draw them. That's also what it says on the current Oracle text. But you can choose not to use the Sylvan. Ooh, he's probably going to flip here on the Underworld Dreams. Yep, there we go. There's the first flip. Wow, I mean, this is an exciting game one. Explosive starts from both players. There's the flip. It's a hit. Underworld Dreams is gone. So now Evo can start using his Sylvan again. Passing the turn here. 
There is a Mishra's factory. Now remember, Ratmar is playing with a lot of copy artifacts, so he could decide to start copying those factories. Passing the turn here, and now, of course, Evo can use his Sylvan. Still on 19. Also playing with two Mirror Universes. Both players here playing Mirror Universe, by the way, so maybe they're both kind of tempted to take a lot of damage, thinking, you know, I've got my Mirror anyway. So that, you know, that can lead to really funny scenarios here. Look at that, taking an extra card, going to go to 15. And this makes sense, you know, if you've got the Sylvan, use it. Of course, the funny thing about Evo's deck is it's not really fast, but it is going quite quickly now because of that Soul Ring and, of course, that Sylvan. Finding the cards that he needs. Okay, there we see a Jam Day Tome. That is really good. If it can stick, and I think it can, because remember, Redmar is playing blue and black. That's not really good at getting rid of artifacts. There we see an Icy Manipulator. Good consider now tapping down exactly the Gem Day Tome, kind of forcing Evo to make a decision. Do you want to draw something that you've got to tap down now before looking at your cards? Of course, Evo did know what card was on the top because of that Sylvan. But just that first card, though, because he took an extra card last turn. So looking at two new cards and one card that he already knew was there. But maybe the reason that uh, Evo played it out is because of that uh, Titania song that he's got in hand. There is a Maze of If, so it's going to protect him potentially if he plays that uh, Titania song. But I mean, does he want to do it now? Ooh, we're going to tap six, or we're going to see the Brain Geyser. There's the Brain Geyser that we saw in this opener, drawing four cards. So a lot of card advantage here early on for Evo. Look at that, refilling his hand. I mean, if you're Detmar, you must not be happy with the situation here. You're like, oh, he's drawing so many cards. Tapping here to Felwer Stone. Making a blue, I assume. Okay, Ancestral Recall. Talking about drawing cards. I mean, that kind of gets him back into it. But still, it's only plus two cards, of course. And Deathmar has already drawn an extra card from the Sylvan and four extra from the Brain Geyser. But still, tapping four here for some pressure on the board to Suchi. Now, do remember, Evo, of course, has that Maze of If. So now we see an activation and no Icy Manipulator being used here by Detmar, or it is actually, okay. Saying I'm gonna tap down the Soul Ring, I think that's a good decision. In response, Evo could of course use the book if he wants to, decides not to. Just drawing one card. Ooh, but a good one, Mishra's uh, workshop. Remember, his deck is full of artifacts. Are we going to see a stone calendar? I wanna see a stone calendar! Yeah, Stone Calendar! I'm just, I mean, I'm really happy when I see cards that I hardly ever see in the game. And Edmar, you're picking it up, reading the card. Reading the card explains the card, right? That's what the professor always says. But in old school, it doesn't always, you know, it's, it's better to read the oracle text of these cards to really understand them. Although for Stone Calendar, you're pretty safe. So all the, um, everything that Evo wants to cast from now on is, uh, it costs one less to cast. One generic mana less. So that's pretty sweet. There is a tap down. Ooh, of the maze, gonna swing in. Look at him go here. Not animating his factory, though. That could have been an option as well to go in for six. Time walk taking an extra turn. Ooh, I think that I would have also attacked with the factory, to be honest. Because then you could, you know, have the two extra. You're gonna untap anyway. And... Oh, then again, wait a minute, I forgot about the factory, of course, on the side of Evo. Sorry, I said nothing. <laughs> You're doing really well, Redmar. I mean, don't listen to me. There's another attack with the Suchi, so Evo dropping to seven. There's another Suchi. Wow, I mean, the tables are really turning here. I think if you're Evo, you really need a Mirror Universe. Or you could, of course, play that Titania song. I mean, if you play Titania's song, then I guess your Stone Calendar comes to life, becomes a 5-5, which is a really good blocker for all those 4-4s four on the table. But you're also giving Redmar, of course, a 2-2 creature and a 4-4 four four creature with that Felwer Stone and the Icy Manipulator. So it, it's a difficult situation here 
for uh, for Evo. I think the time walk was really uh, really deadly here, taking eight damage instead of four. That's a big difference. There's another Mishra's factory. So we've got Mishra's workshop, Mishra's factory. That looks kind of nice. Who is going to tap four? Are we going to see an icy manipulator? He also plays with a full playset of those in his deck. What is he going to do? Who's going to untap again? Okay, because it's one less to cast, of course. So now it's only three to cast the icy because of the stone calendar. That, that's pretty cool. I love how Mishra's Workshop and Stone Calendar work together so well. I never realized that, actually. It's really nice synergy. Dropping the Icy just for three, so he only has to tap the Workshop. And I think he's thinking about playing the Titania Song here. If he does, he has two 4-4 four, four creatures, a 5-5 five, five creature, and a 1-1 one, one creature. I, I, I think he almost should, right? There's so much pressure. He's on seven. The Demonic Tutor. Okay, that is interesting. Again, only one because of that stone calendar. It's so weird to see to see him just not cast, not pay enough. But he is paying enough because of the calendar. So every time I have to think, oh yeah, he's got the stone calendar. It's really, it's really cool to see this card in action. I think it's it's one of those cards that's better than you think it is. Because because you're looking at it, you think, okay, it's five to cast. Why would I want to have like an advantage of, of of casting my spells cheaper for just one? Uh, if it's five to cast, if, it, if if this artifact would be three, for example, it would see a lot of play, for sure. Maybe even at four also, but at five, it's pretty steep. But now that I see it in action, I'm like, oh, it's actually quite nice. I wonder what card he's going to look up. Perhaps a time walk? Could be an option. I mean, Ancestral Recall, yes, but what do you want to do with even more cards? Another option could be Hercules Recall. Ooh, he's going to tap four, five. Okay, is he going to play out the card straight away? Oh, it's a Mirror Universe. Okay. It's risky. I mean, is he going to survive, though? It is risky. Exactly, he's got the Icy still. Maybe he's gonna die, maybe he's not gonna survive. This is really risky, he doesn't have enough mana to activate the factory. I mean, there are two, he can tap down the maze. I think he's just gonna die, to be honest. I think he's not gonna survive, I think he made a mistake here. I mean, I get the Mirror Universe, but I think a Hercules Recall would've really helped him here. He could've bounced all the artifacts of Edmar. Or am I missing something? Is there still an option? Tapping down the maze. I think this is it. Just attack with both. He's on seven. That's it. Yep, winning here. So evil, you're making that slight mistake. Maybe missed the fact that the uh, icy was still untapped and he could still tap something on end step and then use it again. Um, yeah, like I said, I think if he would have gone for Hercules Recall, we probably would have seen a completely different game. Also, keeping in mind that Evo had the Titania song in hand. But what an interesting first game. I mean, I really enjoy watching these cards in action. It's great. Both of these players are now going to dive into their sideboards. And we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. Evo on the play after losing that first game. Let's see what both players have. Here we see the hands again. Pretty sweet. Ooh, there is a uh, time twister. That's looking good. No ramp though, but um, yeah. A swamp, two islands, and of course a copy artifact. Ooh, look at this. We see a mox, two moxen actually. So some ramp, the right mana. So yeah, this is a, the hand you definitely can keep. I think if you're Redmar, you're happy to see the moxen because you can copy them. And then again, Evo having that crumble, he can start crumbling down then that uh, that copy artifact. But let's first see what's gonna happen. There we go, two Moxen. Mox Emerald, Mox Ruby, and of course a Mishra's Factory, so we can start attacking next turn. And we saw in the hand of Redmar no ramp, unless of course he now drew into a Mox, just an island and a pass. But remember, next turn he can play out the copy artifact. Tapping four, wow, what a start here. Turn two, Icy Manipulator. I wonder if you're Deathmark, if you're going to copy the Icy here. That could be interesting as well. 
Tapping two, gonna play that copy artifact. What is he gonna target though? He's gonna target the copy artifact. I think that makes sense. It's much better than the mocks. Or are we gonna see that crumble now? Tapping five. Okay, we're not gonna see the crumble. We're gonna see the stone calendar instead. So again, a stone calendar finding its way onto the battlefield. That is pretty sweet. We saw a stone calendar game one. We see a stone calendar game two. Redmar here playing another island. Let's see what he can do. Perhaps just gonna pass and then in the upkeep tap something down on the side of Evo. Just gonna let it be, let him draw the card. Of course, he can still tap something down on end step or whenever he wants. No need to already do it during the upkeep. I mean, usually you wanna use it if you wanna use it to tap down a mana source, but I think Evo has so much mana, I wouldn't really target a mana source. You could consider going for the Tropical Island because then he doesn't have any blue mana, but I think in this case, ooh, there's a Neverneural's disc, I believe coming from the sideboard. Yeah, and it's one mana less because of the stone calendar. I think in this case, what you really want to do is you want to... Ooh, he's not tapping anything down end step. I was really thinking just tap down the uh, the Icy Manipulator here. Going to tap four. Ooh, there's also a Neverneural's Disc from Adepmar also coming from the sideboard. So both players are just going to disc away here. There's a crumble though, a quick crumble on this Neverneural's Disc. So there's four extra life here for Deathmar, so going up to 24. Wow, where I kind of expected that crumble to go straight away on the Icy Manipulator. That didn't happen. Instead, it's gonna go on this Nevernoral's disc, which is understandable. That kind of also shows that sometimes you just gotta keep those cards in hand, you know, don't just uh, go for the first target that you see. In this case, it was a good decision by Evo to kind of wait with the crumble. He's gonna tap three here for a jam they tone. Wow, and I mean, look at look at that, attacking for two here as well, but so many artifacts. What he really needs here is a Titania Song. If he can find a Titania Song, I mean, he can attack for, you know, he's got a 4-4, four, four, a 4-4, four, four, a 4-4, four, four, and a 5-5. Five, five. Like, he can attack for 17 damage. I mean, that is huge. Here we see a City of Brass being played out by Redmar. Tapping four, are we gonna see another artifact? There's an Icy Manipulator. So now he has two Icy's. Only one mana open though, but at least it's one. So two Icy Manipulators versus an Icy and a lot more artifacts. This is really an artifact battle like this, this game number two. So it looks like he's thinking about tapping something down, deciding not to. So Evo drawing the card for turn. I really wonder what's in his hand. He, if he can find that Titania song, and if he can, if he can time it right, it can be disastrous for that mark. Is he animating the factory here? He is animating the factory and attacking. In response, he's tapping it down, taking a damage. So tapping down the factory. Two cards in hand for Evo. I mean, it's interesting that he chose to attack, by the way, because now he doesn't have enough mana to use his Gem Dayton. Kind of expected him to do that. Does he have a Time Walk in hand? Gonna tap a blue. There's a Time Walk. There we go. So he is gonna untap. What is he gonna find? Two cards in hand. Can of course attack again for two, but I think if you're Deathmar, you or if you're Evo, I mean, you really wanna draw a card as well with the Gem Detone. Looks like he's going to do that. He's gonna draw a card and try to find, no, he's not gonna play another Stone Calendar. Sweet. I wonder what that last card in hand is. Like, if it is a Titania Song, that would be epic. I'm really hoping to kind of see that Titania Song in action and see what the deck is supposed to do. We can already see those stone calendars doing work. Redmar a little bit in the tank here. 
Tapping four. Okay, there's a Suchi. Of course, uh, Evo here can tap down the Suchi on NSEP or can choose to tap down one of the ICs. Exactly, going to use the IC manipulator. What is he going to do with it? What is he going to tap down? That's a big question. Going to tap down the Suchi. And it kind of makes sense also because Redmar has two ICs, of course, and only one land, so he can only use one anyway. So tapping down an IC doesn't really help. Could have also decided to perhaps tap down the City of Brass instead. Would have been another line. Going to tap three. Are we going to see another stone calendar? Oh, wow. So we're going to see a, a mind twist for four, and he only has to pay two for it. I mean, I have to say I'm really loving the stone calendars. I still don't love mind twist, don't get me wrong, but it is cool to see somebody cast a mind twist for four and only paying three mana for it. I mean, that's funny. So taking care of the entire hand of Redmar. So this could be a game decider here. And here you can see Evo deciding not to uh, to attack. And that makes sense. You want to keep that mana open to use your IC. I think it's interesting here that Redmar didn't uh, use his IC to tap down the IC of, uh, of Evo. Because in that case, um, you know, Evo wouldn't have been able to tap down the Suchi. So if he would have played it a little bit different, he could have dealt four damage here to Evo. There's a copy <laughs> on the IC manipulator. I mean, this this is a comp this is just a complicated board state. We've got two ICs on both sides, and I really wonder if Redmar is now going to use his ICs on end step. That's something that he should just always do. Oh, look at that. He's going to copy a stone calendar. <laughs> oh, I love it. He first copied an IC, did, changed his mind. And I have to say, Evo, I love it, man. Oh, and there, oh, for a moment there, I thought he was going to play out the Titania song. But he's not. not no cards in hand. What he needs is just to start drawing cards with that uh, GM Day Tome. Oh, there's a Diamond Valley. This game could take long. Wow, so Diamond Valley card from Arabian Nights, tap and sack a creature, gain life equal to the toughness. And uh, yeah. This is an interesting, interesting situation. I, I, I believe that again, and look at it, Evo is also not doing it. Both players are not really using those ICs to, uh, to their full uh, potential. Now he's going to tap four to draw a card. What could it be? I mean, with the stone calendar, I mean, every thing that he wants to cast is three generic mana cheaper because of those three stone calendars. That's kind of insane. I mean, you can cast another Icy for one. Ooh, look at that. There's a Sylvan. I think this is pretty good, the Sylvan. There's a pass again to that one, not using those Icy's. Like, he could put a lot more pressure on the life total of Evo if he would use those Icy manipulators. But also, Evo is not doing it. It's quite interesting. Both players kind of ignoring the ICs. And now it's Evo's turn to take advantage of the Sylvan 20 life. I mean, if you're Evo, what you want is that Titania song, right? He's playing two in the deck. Titania Song would be so good here on this board for Evo. Gonna take an extra card, gonna go to 16. Gonna tap an underground C. Another copy. And now he is gonna copy the IC Manipulator. So three IC Manipulators, three Stone Calendars, one Nevenerals Disc, one Jam de Tome. It's insane. If he can find a Titania Song, it's going to be crazy. Even without the song, he's got the three icy, so he can really start tapping down stuff on the end step of Redmar. Or is Redmar gonna wake up and use his icy's on the end step of Evo? Here we see the pass. Again, no activation with the icy's. This really surprises me. Redmar drawing another card, passing the turn. Is Evo now gonna use his icy's? It looks, it looks like he is. 
Okay, he has woken up. Now we're going to see those, those famous icy battles. Tapping everything down here on the side of Redmar. All the permanents, all the non-land permanents are tapped down. And now at least Evo can attack for two with the factory. But if he can find a Titania song, I mean, it would be end game almost, right? Redmar is on, I believe, 21, it seems, right? And there is more than 21 damage there on the board. I mean, three ICs alone, that's 12. The stone calendars, it's 15, it's 27. Oh, there's a Titania song! Wow, wow, wow. What a way here to, to win this game. You could kind of see it coming, right? Like, this should happen. Or is there an answer still from Redmar? I don't think there is. Like, of course, he can sack the Suchi. To gain some life. I don't think it's gonna ha gonna work though. There's the full attack. The Moxen are gonna go. Also attacking, I assume, with the uh, Nevenerals disc. Okay, he is gonna kill one of them. So he's gonna take two damage. Then he's gonna eat up probably a Suchi, or I guess I guess he's gonna eat up an IC. He's gonna take gain four again. He's gonna lose two though, go down to 19 and then he's going to take yeah just a lot of damage here a lot of damage because it's 15 it's 27 damage plus a jam day tome 31 points of damage coming through i believe yeah 31 points of damage wow so you, you're being attacked by by calendars and books and discs i mean that's got to be a weird experience for that mark and I have to say, if you're Evo, you got to be so happy, you know, to have this moment here to really see your deck doing what is what it is supposed to do. And it's just, uh, yeah, it's epic. Absolutely epic. Uh, well done here. And the good news is it is 1-1. So we are going to go to an all deciding game. Number three. Game number three, here we go. The Decider, Redmar, of course, on the play after losing that second game, having a, a good start here. Mox Sapphire and Island passing the turn to Evo. I believe both players kept their opening hands. There we see, ooh, talking about good openings here. Mox Jet, Mishra's Workshop. There's an Icy Manipulator, ooh, that is really sweet. Can start tapping down the lands of Redmar, make it kind of difficult for him. I wonder if Redmar can find maybe a copy artifact. Let's see. Oh, there's a strip mine. That is really good. That strip mine taking care of the workshop. Good move here by Redmar finding that one strip mine, taking care of business. But I mean, the good news for Evo is he already took advantage of the workshop, was able to play out that uh, icy manipulator that's super annoying right now, tapping down the mocks here of Redmar. I think if you're a Deathmar, what you want to do here is, you know, play a copy, if you have one, of course, and, and copy the IC. That's possibly the, uh, potentially the best scenario here. But not happening, though, just passing the turn to blue open. There's an underground C. It's going to tap down the Sapphire again, passing the turn, of course, and doing that in the upkeep of the Deathmar. There's a City of Brass. So could now start tapping down the City of Brass, dealing some damage at the same time as well. That's something that I always enjoy doing with my deck at Timmy's Spellbook. Tapping down those Cities of Brass and pinging my opponent, dealing two damage a turn. Looks like there's a pass now, or not. No, it's going to tap four. It's going to play a Nevenerals disc. And I mean, I think if you're Deathmore, you're not too worried about this disc. Because, of course, Evo has more permanence in play. There we see a City of Brass being tapped, I assume, for black mana. Oh, there's an Evanerals disc on the side of Redmar as well. That is funny. So both players boarded in those discs after the first game. We haven't seen a single disc activation, though, in game number two, despite the fact that uh, we saw a lot of them. There's a Maze of If from Evo here, tapping down the City of Brass. Passing the turn. Interesting that he did that in the in his own main phase and not, for example, in the upkeep here of Redmar. You would expect him. I, I thought maybe he's doing it because he wants to play Time Walk afterwards and wants to make sure that Redmar doesn't have any mana open to do anything against it. 
but that wasn't the case. I think if you're a Detmar, it must be really tempting to now just pop the disc. Yeah, I understand this line of play. I mean, you're basically winning an IC here, which is good. Does he have a follow-up, though? That's the question. There's an IC taking two damage. But that IC is pretty good also against the Maze. There we see a Mox Sapphire by Ifo. What else can he do? Tapping four and okay, there's an icy as well from the side of Evo. So both players kind of rebuilding. So many ICs in this matchup. There's a Diamond Valley. I am still kind of hoping that Zephmar can find land number five and an evil eye of Orms by Gore. That would be really sweet. It's again one of those cards you don't see often. We'll just have to wait and see. Tapping for another icy. Wow. And again here we see Detmar not using the icy on end step. Maybe he's got his reasons. There's an underground C for Evo. There we go. Is he going to tap down both City of Brasses? That way he can deal two points of damage. Looks like uh, like Redmar is a little bit in the tank here. Gonna tap two blue. Nope, he's not. Okay, he's just gonna take the damage here. Again, like in, in I don't know. It's just it's so interesting to see Redmar not using that icy. Like one of the things he can do on end step of Evo is at least tap down one of the. Ices of Evo, and then even if Evo in response step down, taps down the City of Brass, then at least he can use it this turn, right? He can untap it in his own turn again. Anyway, uh, we see a Swamp being played out by Detmar and a pass. Three cards in hand for Evo. So he's going to pass turn and again doing the same thing here in the upkeep of Detmar. So Detmar taking two more points of damage, dropping to 12. Gonna tap two blue, Felwer Stone, passing the turn. I mean, those two City of Brasses are slowly gonna actually gonna kill the Detmar here. I mean, it's a weird way of losing the game, but it can definitely happen. I mean, he's going to do it again. Oh, and here we see Hercules Recall being played out. Is this then in the end step? So he is going to do this on end step. But then Redmar should still take those two points of damage, I believe. So he should go to 10, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, let's see what else he's going to do. Tapping six. Oh, Brain Geyser. Okay, that's pretty good. So going to draw four cards from the Brain Geyser, choosing uh, not to use the City of Brasses in his hand. And I think the good news for Redmar here is that he's got the Diamond Valley, so if he can find some creatures, he can get back uh, back into it, you know. Or if he can find, uh, of course, his uh, Mirror Universe, that would be quite good. And I guess Evo is just going to recast the Icy. The good news for Redmar here is that Evo doesn't have a lot of mana, so you know it's gonna it's gonna take a while for him to kind of rebuild. He's going to pass the turn, so now we're going to see that Icy probably being used. Going to tap down the City of Brass. He's going to go to 11. There's a Mishra's Factory. There's a Soul Ring. Tapping four. Five. Oh, an Evil Eye of Orms by Gore. I'm happy. I'm happy. I just wanted to see this in this match and uh, it's here on the board so a 3-6 creature originally from a legends one black and four to cast cannot be blocked by walls and only evil eye can only be blocked by walls i mean and uh, only evil eyes can attack when it's on the battlefield but of course evo does have and the maze and the icy manipulator i'm just really waiting for the moment when redmar is going to start using it icy Oh, there's a copy on the IC. That is unfortunate. 
for that mar. That is not great. So difficult to play against all these ICs. Oh, and there's a crumble. In response, still using it though. He is going to gain four life. That's something. He's going to go back up to 15. And of course, he's going to tap here the city in response to that tap down. So now Detmar is on 14, taking his turn. So yeah, Detmar needs to find a way to deal with the maze and of course those ICs. Tapping a black. What is he going to cast here? Taking a damage from the city. Oh, an Underworld Dreams. That is kind of nice. If you can also find, like, for example, his uh, Time Twister. Tapping four. Okay, there's a Suchi. Going to sack the Evil Eye to gain some life. I'm liking the synergy between Evil Eye and Diamond Valley because, of course, Evil Eye has that six toughness, so six life. But also, Evil Eye, you know, it's unblockable. But it also says you can only attack with Evil Eyes and not with other creatures. So if you want to get rid of that because it no longer works for you, you can just, you know, eat it up with your Diamond Valley. So Detmar going all the way back up to 19, but now of course taking damage again from the City of Brass, being tapped down by the Icy Manipulator, so he's now on 18. Of course Evo here needs to take a damage from the Underworld Dream, so he should drop to 19. There's a Stone Calendar. So now everything's a little bit cheaper for Evo to cast. Exactly, now uh, Detmar mentions that trigger from the Underworld, so he's on 19. The cool yeah. thing is, by the way, if you, like in, in Deathmar's deck, you have Brain Geyser and Underworld Dreams, you can make something called a Blue Fireball. So you can, uh, can have a Brain Geyser and force your opponent to draw X cards. And then if you have your Underworld Dreams on board, you basically deal damage equal to the amount of cards you're forcing your opponent to draw. So the name for that combo is called the Blue Fireball. I mean, is it good? Well, it could be good as a finisher. You're not going to do it otherwise, but as a finisher, it could be pretty good. Anyway, uh, I believe Redmar already has played out his uh, his brain geyser here. He's on 17. Ooh, another Underworld Dreams. That is pretty sweet, and I think that 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 Diamond Valley is going to make sure that he's not going to die. Ooh, he's going to animate and he's going to attack here. Super aggressive. Seeing that, uh, of course, the Deathmar only has one land open to tap something down. So it's probably going to tap down the uh, the Suchi. Or does he have other options? Maybe he's got a Hercules Recall in his hand. No, he's got a Crumble. So crumbling one of the factories. Sending back the Suchi. Taking two damage. Could pump it up here. Doesn't pump it up, could pump it up here to three. Now taking two damage from the Underworld Dream, so he's gonna drop to 15. I mean, this is quite an exciting game number three. Both players are still very much in it. And Evo has got really good defenses. The problem for Evo is that double Underworld Dreams needs to find perhaps uh, Nefneral's Disc, but then again, if he, if he does that, he blows everything up. Perhaps what you really want to want to find if your Evo is a um, uh, 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 Titania song. Tapping two here for an Icy Manipulator. Of course, the Icy is being really cheap to cast because of those two stone calendars. Tap down the city again. So Deathmore dropping to 18. Oh, there's a drop of honey. Wow, I didn't see that coming. So drop of honey card from the Arabian Nights. It's an enchantment. During your upkeep, the player with the lowest, uh, the, the creature with the lowest uh, toughness, or is it power, uh, has to sacrifice that creature. And I, I believe it's power. And if it's tied for power, then the uh, owner of the uh, drop of honey can choose. So next upkeep for Evo, the only creature on board is the Suchi. So the Suchi is going to die. There we see an attack here. Looks like he's going to send back. He's going to tap two. He's going to send one back, I assume. Okay, so he's going to send back a factory. 
Now he's going to eat up the sushi, of course, because he doesn't want to lose it to the, uh, the drop of honey. And the drop of honey gets destroyed when there are no creatures in play anymore. So basically the drop of honey was a way to get rid of the sushi. It's not too bad here for, uh, for Evo. <laughs> of course, the problem for Evo is that double underworld dreams. So Evo now on 13. So if Redmar can find his time twister, he can win the game. It's as simple as that. But I mean, it's just one card though. Also playing with Demonic Tutor, of course. So Demonic Tutor will also grant him the victory because he can he can tutor for the uh, the time twister. And I believe that he's forgetting to take damage exactly. He has to go here to 11. Wow, what an, what an exciting game number three here. Gonna drop to nine. I mean, if you're Evo, you need to find a Titania song. Nope. And Titania song is gonna give you the win, but you don't have much longer. Four more turns to go. Because you're not going to win it by tapping down the uh, City of Brasses. Because remember, one of the things that Tedapmar can also do is he can animate one of the factories, pump itself, pump it with the other factory. Ooh, wow, this could be a decider here. Psionic Blast on the life total of Evo. Oh, Time Twister! That's it. That is the game. Wow, and the match. Man, I really, really enjoyed this matchup. I wish it was a best of five and not a best of three, but uh, wow. What a way to end this. I mean, for both players. I mean, if you're Evo, you were waiting for a Titania song. It was not coming, though. Oh, man, you were waiting for the Titania song. And, uh, and yeah, for that part, you were just waiting for that to time twister. And, of course, the Psionic Blast also did the job. I think that Psionic also did enough to get Evo close enough to the end to finish it off with the Underworld Dreams. But uh, really nice, really, really, really nice match. Great, great action here. And of course, congratulations to Redmar for winning round number three here of the Zombie Cup number two. Oh man, wow, what a match. This is why I love old school magic so much. And please join us again next week for more action from the Zansa Zombie Cup number two, because then we have this match for you. Michel with Mono Black, his beta Mono Black deck, taking on Dedek the Zombie Master, playing his Mono Black deck, The Underworld. And here we can see his deck, really cool. Four Zombie Masters, also Cabo Ghouls, and just a lot of cool stuff happening in both of these decks. This is going to be a really sweet matchup. Now, if you want to make sure that you don't miss this update, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for uh, for supporting Timmy Talks. That way, please consider leaving a like, sharing this on your socials, and also leave a comment. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And talking about moving forward, you can also become a sponsor of the show by becoming a patron. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks, and you can become a patron for just $1 a month. And for that dollar, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord, and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll.